Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the second episode of the Racing Sim Tools, the RST series that I'm doing. And today we're going to tackle how you actually set up the software to get started quickly because it can be a little bit of a struggle to start with. It's actually one of my least favorite things about the software, but at the same time, it does make it really accurate and that's really important to get good data which then informs making a good setup so a little bit of pain at the beginning for reward further down the line but today we're going to tackle exactly how you set up the initial software for a new car that you're tuning and also as you may have guessed it introduce you to the fact that our project car is going to be the mclaren 720s in tt3 it's it's seen a new lease of life recently in the game with a new balance of performance new 1.6 update and and I've, I've decided to take it for the upcoming series i'm going to be racing in both endurance wise and and uh a sprint series so really good for me to to get to know this car in a little bit more detail and obviously use it as a project car for you guys we're going to be tuning it as we go along and explaining what each of the various screens and, and dampings and suspension setups there and everything uh, as we go along. So let's dive in because just starting from scratch, it can be a little frustrating. You just, you're just with this blank screen, right? And you've got to make sure if you've got the whole package, you select ACC if you're on ACC at the top. And the most important thing is you, you must you must select this next session car params parameters and instead of the little car icon on the left hand side which appears if you've done some laps and you, you can you can do this before you start your your session right because then it saves it going forward and you don't have to keep redoing it because if you just use a little uh, button then it's not gonna it's not gonna remember it for you and we're faced with this little mini screen that comes up and and um, you can load ones that you've already done so I've been tuning the Lexus recently you guys know Project Lexus um, but today we're in the McLaren so we've got to find that sort of in the list um, and, and it, this is key because the guys at RST have already inputted some of the data okay so we don't know about the, the width of the tires or anything like that they've already got that so they put it in so you don't have to but a few other tabs on this little screen dampers and gearing the acc doesn't actually export the damping data so we don't have to worry about that and gearing is fixed so we don't have to worry about that either we're faced with this screen with you know 15 20 different things to to, to put in potentially we know we're going to be running pretty much a symmetrical setup uh, a lot of you will be unless it's on a particularly different track we've got lots of cambers actually one with ovals that sort of thing but mainly on acc it's symmetrical setups right it's got a lot of different things that we need to input um, um, at the minute we don't really have any idea how to do it okay so the quickest way to get this data is just look at your setup so simple as that we're just going to load the aggressive preset just for for example's sake and the first tab you want to go to is mechanical grip so remember we need to get spring rates and ride heights and anti-roll bars okay so we're simply going to be inputting that data into the right uh, in, into the right units in the right format into RSD. So make a note down, 15, well, 15,000 on the front, you know, 156 on the back, anti-roll bars, 6 and 4. But the other thing that we need to look at is actually the number of clicks. So the way you calculate the front anti-roll bar rate is dividing the game value. So we've got 6 by the number of clicks there are in that range. Okay, so on the rear it's 14. On the front it's 11. The next thing we need to be looking at is our aero because we need the the ride height both the front and the back and actually we're going to then use this to calculate not just the input so 52 millimeters and 75 on the rear which we're going to put into the um, sort of front left ride height and, and rear left ride height we also need this to calculate the static ride height which we'll uh, we'll do in a second as well. So make sure you jot down those values while you're there. Don't forget about them. As I said, we're going to need them to calculate a few other things as well. And, and there is actually, I built a little sheet to remind me how to do this each time because it is a little bit of a faff. So it's an eight stage, or really it's a six stage um, sort of process. You, you've got to make sure you select the, the next car parameters. Select your car from the drop down menu, enter the spring rates, the, the IR, don't need to worry about it on ACC you need to enter the actual ride height that's in your setup calculate the anti-roll um, 
bar rates, which we've done already. And I've just done a few little calculations below just so I can do it quickly. And, and then the final thing that we need to do is calculate the static ride height. So let's go ahead and input all of those values that we know so far um, into the software. So nice and easy, just going to do it in, in real time. Doesn't take too much effort. Type in the calculation. Here we go. We had, you know, 115,000 or 156,000 on the front spring rate. So therefore, we input 156 into the software. We had gain value of six on the front anti roll bar. There are 11 clicks. Divide the two together. You've got 65 as a rate. It's really important that you get these values correct because, like I said at the start of the video, correct data and the correct starting point is going to really affect where your setup goes. The more accurate you can do it now, the more accurate your setup and the data that RST is going to give you further down the line, which is obviously important to get an effective setup. If it's giving you wrong information, you're going to interpret it incorrectly. Your setup's not going to be what is actually happening on the screen. So it's a knock on effect. So this is a really important stage. Make sure you save it. I just, you know, save it as something new. We're on a McLaren on Nurburgring, for example. So then if you come back to this again, you can just quickly load it up. And it's it's really important to know that the quickest way to get these hot, this hot lap check, this static ride height that we're talking about, is just go into hot lap. Just, just run it on the pit limiter or, or, or just do it for a couple of seconds and then um, and finish the, the, the mini lap. Uh, if you like, and, and actually what that will do is I was to give you a little readout and you can immediately flick across to the software and get this static input because it's the quickest way that I've found to get this information without doing a whole lap, right? So you don't you don't want to be just wasting you know, two minutes of your life every time that you're starting a new car or a new track. So immediately you get this output in the software, make sure that your uh, your graph is in the time, the, the x-axis in the time, you actually get some, some values up click across into handling and then into damper speeds and you get you know this lovely little information actually we've got the car stationary for a little bit here you can use when you're on the pit limiter it's it's quite good actually I, sometimes i do use that one but but mainly when the car is stationary you can see our static ride height is somewhere around 15 and 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 17 on the back so make it as accurate as you can a little generalization between the two you know the front and left they're going to be slightly different just you know, where the driver sits how much fuel you've got on all that sort of thing where the fuel tank is but make a bit of a generalization and, and then you can input that into the software again next parameters suspension tab in they go after we've inputted this as well it's uh, good practice just to save things it's it is a nightmare to have to do this each time so just get into the habit of saving things backing things up it's just good practice to do that anyway and actually what we need to do now if you want to be really accurate and i don't do this really a lot of the time is just do a quick check so again straight into hot lap off you go just you know a little bit on the pit limiter maybe and then just we'll whiz it forward that's all you need to do just get to the end of the lap and then after that you can cross reference what the data is saying with what you've inputted into the game so remember we have 52 millimeters on the front ride height and 75 on the back if we just drag this right across to the left hand side where the car was pretty stationary you can see we're, we're pretty much there so we know there's a little bit of play in the ride height settings so we know that when we're looking at rake and things as we dive deeper into the setup later on as we start to tune the car that there's going to be a few you know a couple of millimeters just 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 to play with there again a bit of a reminder of the checklist before you start the session you must you must must i can't cannot stress this enough and this is what was foiling me to start with click on the next session car param parameters button select your car enter the spring rates and and anti-roll bar rates and uh, just calculate them yourself or, or use this calculator. I can put this link in the description if you guys want but it's simple you know a little bit of simple maths um save it calculate the static height save it again just get into that mindset and then you know from there you're ready to go i hope this was was useful guys because i i found it a little bit frustrating to set up rst the first time like i said at the top of the video it's, it's the, the thing that annoys me the most but it's also very helpful because it gives you accurate data it's not quite as quick to use but it's worth it in the long run so i thought just a nice swift video to show you if any of you struggling how to set up uh, you know, jump in the discord i'll put that in the link below as well they're really helpful the guys 
and straight on any questions really good really responsive but i thought this might be useful for you if you're not subbed to the channel already um we're going to be doing a whole load of episodes on rst i'm going to be taking this mclaren and tuning it on on a track i'm not sure which track yet maybe let me know in the comments below which one you want me to tune for not monza i will just ignore everyone who comments monza because because in fact you can unsubscribe um and <laughs> maybe not uh, and then we'll go through each each area and the rest of the the series on on what they do how to adjust it and what actually happens to the car when you change this thing and 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 pull the whole setup together from scratch to guide you through that process like i said if you're not subbed hit the button and the little bell icon as well to get all of the notifications and uh join the discord and the link below as well until next time see you then <laughs>